Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Suresh Dharmapuri. I am an assistant professor of medicine at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Uh, I specialize in the treatment of gastrointestinal cancers. Uh, and today, I'm excited to be here uh, to kick off the colorectal cancer awareness month. So uh, what is circulating tumor cell testing and circulating tumor DNA testing? So circulating tumor te uh, cell testing is a diagnostic tool that is essentially trying to analyze uh, the, the blood of a cancer patient to identify cells that may have kind of separated from the tumor itself and are floating around in a patient's blood circulation. Uh, it's a test that is currently only available in the research setting. It's not widely commercially available. Uh, on the other hand, we have CT DNA testing, which is actually uh, stands for circulating tumor DNA testing, that is looking to identify DNA molecules in your bloodstream that are coming from your cancer cells. So as cancer cells are growing uh, kind of un uh, unregulated, they also tend to die and release DNA into your bloodstream. Now, this DNA from your cancer cell is kind of floating around with a lot of the normal DNA uh, from your normal cells. That's called cell-free DNA. And the CTDNA testing is essentially trying to isolate, identify, and then sequence that DNA to identify the specific mutations uh, that are present in these DNA molecules. And that uh, gives us a wealth of information about several different uh, uh, characteristics of, of the cancer, cancer itself. So yeah, liquid biopsies um, are essentially a synonymous term, uh, more or less, to ctDNA biopsies. Um, what, what, when we say liquid biopsies, we're really referring to the process of you going to a phlebotomist uh, or, or a person who's drawing your blood. Uh, it's a simple needle stick into a peripheral vein. Uh, they draw an additional vial or two of blood, and then that blood is sent off to a laboratory that analyzes uh, this, this blood to look for the DNA molecules we just talked about. Um, so the process, the whole process of the blood withdrawal and then being sent to a, 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 a platform that actually does these tests and reporting back is the whole process uh, known as a liquid biopsy. Um, these biopsies are able to give us uh, a wealth of information, if uh, you know most information, if not all of it, that we, that we would get from a traditional solid tumor biopsy. Um, so there, there, there's, there's a lot of things you could do with it, but it, I just want to, you know, clarify that this is by no means a replacement for a solid tumor biopsy. You would still need those, but this is a test that we use, um, kind of, uh, as a complementary uh, test to a solid tumor biopsy. Uh, when is this test used and what types of cancers? Um, so, so I'll briefly talk about the, you know, the context of this testing in other tumors. The most important thing that we can do with the liquid biopsy is basically try and get, uh, identify the mutations that are existent in this DNA. In today's day and age, we know that most cancers have uh, mutations in them and these mutations are what drive these cancers to, to first of all form and then to kind of grow and move to different parts of the body. So liquid biopsies are able to quickly identify these uh, DNA uh, uh, aberrations, and that can give us a, a lot of information about uh, what kind of cancer you may have. It can tell us about how aggressive or not aggressive your cancer might be, and uh, it can also tell us what treatments may work for you and what may not work for you. So, you know, a wealth of information from a simple uh, blood draw. Um, in terms of where it's used, um, currently, I think it's very well validated in lung cancers, very well validated in colon cancers. Um, in other tumor types, it's currently still evolving. Uh, I've seen several, you know, breast cancer uh, studies that are currently looking at this. Uh, eventually, I think it's going to get to a point where it's going to be used in essentially all cancers. Um, how is ctDNA used in colon cancers? I think there are four main utilities um, for ctDNA in colon cancers. Um, in the last several years, I would say in the last you know four to five years, there's been uh, huge strides in the utility of ctDNA in, first of all, uh, identifying patients who are at a high risk of recurrence of 
after having a curative intense surgical resection. So, you know, if you if you're if you're diagnosed with colon cancer that is localized to the colon only, the first thing that would happen is your surgeon would go ahead and remove what, whatever cancer he can see uh, with his naked eye. But there is a lot going on in the background where uh, the tumor cells are kind of sloughing off from the primary tumor and are circulating in your blood circulation. And um, these are the cells that will eventually settle down in a different part of the body and come back in stage four disease. The role of chemotherapy is essentially to kill off those cancer cells and thereby reduce the risk of cancer recurrence. So um, ctDNA is able to identify who these patients are that have residual cancer cells in your body. If you have residual cancer cells out in your body after having a curative intense surgery, then you're releasing ctDNA into your blood and that ctDNA is identifiable with this test. Um, over the last several years, we've learned that if you are ctDNA positive after a curative intent colon resection, then your risk of the cancer coming back is essentially close to 100%. Uh, so that's when the question comes up uh, of what do we do to prevent or decrease the risk of these cancers coming back? So traditionally, we gave chemotherapy to essentially everybody with stage 3 disease and some patients with high-risk features in stage 2 disease. We now know that ctDNA is, if not a better, it's a, it's a tool that's as good as a pathological evaluation of the tumor under the microscope to identify these high-risk patients. So we are able to if, identify patients who are at a high risk, but what do we do going, up, going from there? And that's where I think uh, there are several studies that are looking to figure out who are these patients that need chemotherapy escalation and who are these patients who need chemotherapy de-escalation? And who are these patients who don't even need chemotherapy because then they're never going to have a recurrence anyway? Um, and that's where I think it's important to talk about the Circulate US study, which is a uh, national-wide study that we are partaking in here at Mount Sinai Health System. This is a study that's trying to answer exactly these questions. Are there a group of patients in the ctDNA positive group that can be, uh, you know, where we can increase the risk of, uh, increase the chances of converting from a ctDNA positive patient to a ctDNA negative by kind of intensifying your chemotherapy. On the other end of the spectrum is ctDNA neg the negative patients who may not even need chemotherapy. So are we able to kind of avoid chemotherapy and thereby avoid the toxicity associated with it in a subgroup of patients that are at a very low risk for cancer recurrence? So that's the first, I think, and the most important uh, utility of ctDNA in colon cancers. Number two, I would say, is early detection of colon cancer recurrence. Now, in patients who have had surgery and followed by the standard chemotherapy, that was what was recommended for them. And once they've completed the whole process of treatment, they move on to what's called surveillance. And surveillance is this process where we're keeping a close eye on you to make sure that your cancer is not coming back. And if it is coming back, we catch it early so that we can treat it early. The whole process of surveillance um, is done for about five years. And ctDNA is uh, it's, it's done you know, through blood testing, tumor marker testing, uh, colonoscopies, and CT scans. Uh, we now have ctDNA uh, entered the field in the, in, in the setting of surveillance. We know from recent really high quality data that uh, ctDNA is able to predict cancer recurrences approximately eight to nine uh, months before the cancer actually shows up on your CT scans. So, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you, you we're able to predict who is going to have a cancer recurrence much earlier than uh, scans would. But we don't yet know what we should be doing about these patients to decrease their cancer recurrence risk. Um, is chemotherapy the answer? Is targeted therapy the answer? We don't just we don't know yet. This is a field that's currently uh, actively being studied, uh, and there are several trials open in that space. So, so you know, if you want to know earlier, there's there's a way to know earlier, and that's ctDNA. It's just uh, that today we don't know what to do with the results. Uh, but I anticipate in the next couple of years, we'll have better answers to that question. Uh, the, ne the next most important use of ctDNA in colon cancer is in evaluating uh, treatment response. Let's say somebody has stage four disease and uh, is getting chemotherapy. 
depending upon the platform you choose for ctDNA testing, uh, there is there are some platforms that are able to give you a tighter or a quantity level of ctDNA po positivity in your blood. So they're gonna be able to tell you so many DNA molecules were found in so much of blood. So as you go through chemotherapy, if you see that the quantity of ctDNA is going up in your blood, then uh, it is safe to assume that your treatment is not working. Uh, similarly, in the opposite end of the spectrum, if your ctDNA quantity is going down, then your treatment is probably working. Um, this is a test that is not fully validated yet. It's currently being studied, but in, in clinical practice, we use it all the time because it's just so good at predicting, uh, giving us early information about where the treatment may be working and may, where it may not be working, kind of uh, you know, leading to early intervention to change therapy if necessary. Uh, and the last, uh, uh, I would say, use of ctDNA in colon cancers is to identify patients who are likely to have uh, targetable mutations. Uh, in today's uh, day and age, we know that there are several mutations that have targets. I think the most popular and more common, the most commonly known uh, is, of course, the BRCA mutation, where we have several drugs that target the BRCA mutation, olaparib, rocaparib, et cetera. Similarly, uh, in colon cancers, we have you know, several drugs that can target mutations, uh, and there are several mutations that we know will make certain chemotherapies effective. For example, the KRAS mutation, um, we know will, is, will make certain group of drugs called EGFR in, uh, inhibitors ineffective in these patients. So if you are, are diagnosed with a mutation in your bloodstream, I could use that information to figure out what additional drugs I could use to get a better response or I, I, I would be able to you know, withhold a certain group of drugs that I know are not gonna be ineffective in your case. So um, that basically, I think, summarizes uh, most of the utility of ctDNA in colon cancers. Uh, and this is, again, a very rapidly evolving field. Uh, we may have a lot more uses to it in the next couple of years. Um, the advantages of these tests are multifold. Uh, uh, I think the best and the most uh, the, the the most obvious advantage to this test is that it's it's a simple non-invasive uh, uh, you know test where you 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 stick a vein in the peripheral arm uh, in the peripheral a peripheral vein in the arm and you, and you draw some blood and that's all it takes to give you so much information. Uh, more or less, you know, the same kind of information that you would get by actually sticking a needle into the solid tumor. So I think the, the easiness of the proceed of the testing, uh, the, 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 the results are actually back really quick uh, based on the platform you choose. You can get your results back in five to two weeks, five days to two weeks. So it's a really quick uh, turnaround time uh, compared, compared to solid tumor testing. Uh, and of course, the convenience of it, it's a simple blood draw that you can have uh, at your doctor's office or based on the platform you choose for testing, you could also have, uh, set up what's called mobile phlebotomy where these companies send their staff to, uh, to your house uh, to schedule a blood draw. So it's, you know, it can be done from the convenience of your couch. So several different advantages, I would say. Um, so you know the first thing that you want you, you that you would want to do if you want to be uh, if you're interested in this test is to talk is talk is to talk to your physician and um, get an idea of if this test is indicated in your specific case. Uh, there are only certain you know certain indications for these tests, and if you think you are somebody who would qualify for these indications, talk to your physician. Your physician is going to uh, order the test uh, depending upon what he decides is a better platform for your test. Uh, you will have a an extra vial or two of blood drawn at the time you get your routine testing for your blood work, or you know your doctor can schedule a mobile phlebotomy where they come to your house and draw your blood. Um, and it's really that simple. Um, in about five days to two weeks, you should have the results back. It goes to your physician's office, and your physician will discuss the results with you and what these results actually mean. So it's really you know pretty straightforward process. It doesn't really involve additional office visits. It doesn't involve, uh, uh, you know, any kind of invasive procedures. Um, a couple of things that I think uh, are important to know about these tests are, like any test out there in the world, the, the, every test has a positive and a negative advantages and disadvantages. Um, 
there are several different platforms that do these tests uh, that are commercially available now, and each one has you know their advantages and you know, benefits and risks associated with them. So you want to talk to your doctor about what might be the better platform for you to use. Uh, some are better than some. Some are better than the other in, at, at the sensitivity of it. Some are better than the other at the specificity of it. So there's several, several different aspects that need to be taken into consideration um, and discussed with your physician before you pick a, the right platform for you. Um, there is also number two a certain amount of false negative rates. Uh, so you, just because you are uh, CTD and a negative at the end of your surgery, uh, after you have had a curative intent surgery, doesn't necessarily mean that you're never going to have your cancer come back. Um, this is unfortunately, uh, you know, dependent on several different factors. If your tumor volume is too low, your uh, ctDNA quantity is expected to be too low, and sometimes a test can miss the ctDNA in your bloodstream. Um, and this, to rectify this, we recommend the a serial ctDNA draws. That basically means you repeat the test at least about three times in the immediate post-operative period. Uh, when I say post-operative period, I'm talking about a couple of weeks to months after surgery. You cannot you know, draw, you know, ctDNA right after surgery. So you need, a, you know, you need a little bit of time after surgery where there is just a lot of background noise in, the, in terms of, uh, you know, normal blood uh, ctDNA that's floating around in your circulation. Once that clears, your chance of identifying ctDNA from your tumor becomes higher. And the more times you do the ctDNA test, the more likely you are to pick up an actual true positive uh, 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 test. Um, then the third thing I think it's important for everybody to know is that a lot of these tests are you know, validated and approved uh, uh, and are completely covered by commercial insurances in, 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 by most commercial insurances. So um, you shouldn't have to pay anything out of pocket. So this is something you want to discuss with your physician, uh, depending upon your situation before uh, before worrying about you know the monetary aspect of it, because today most insurances do cover these testings.